الله أكبر الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Islamic Center at New York University podcast coming to you straight from the heart of New York City. We're building an amazing Muslim community here at ICNYU where everyone is welcomed and respected no matter where you're from or where you're at. This is the place to be. So open your ears and your heart and come along with us on another life-changing journey. Bismillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم My dear brothers and sisters there is a phrase that we all understand it's called seizing the moment Seizing the moment basically means that with our intellect with our minds we are able to identify an opportunity and we are able to take some actions to avail of that opportunity. And find that Alhamdulillah, as Aqil and Balik Lok, we make use of seizing the opportunity, seizing the moment pretty much every day of our life. I work in IT. Somebody recently asked me, did you know about Bitcoins when it started 10, 15 years ago? I was like, yes, I was familiar with the concept. And so they're like, why didn't you buy a few Bitcoins? I was like, I didn't know it was halal or haram. So according to them, I failed to seize the opportunity 10, 15 years ago. As students, as most of you are students here, everybody's familiar with Albert, right? Beginning of every semester, everybody rushes to get on this online system to make sure that within that short period of time, they're able to get into the classes that they want to. Otherwise, you are wasted, uh, waitlisted, or even worse, you're not able to get into the class at all. So this is something that we understand in our daily life. And this is why the concept of waqt, of time, is very important, understanding the importance of time. Our Rabb in the Quran, the Mushan, he swears by the time itself. Wal Asr, inna al insana la fi khusr, illa al ladina amanu wa amil salihat wa tawa sawbil haq wa tawa sawbil sabr. So people who recognize the importance of time. Why is it that I'm mentioning this today? Because, inshallah ta'ala, in a couple of weeks or less than that, a great opportunity will be upon each and every one of us. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is the blessed month of Ramadan. Now, Ramadan is that blessed month that even our master, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he yearned for it and he supplicated for it. There is a narration by Hazrat Anas عنه, in which he mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa months before Ramadan he used to make the dua that oh Allah bless us barik lana fi rajabi wa sha'aban that bless us in the months of rajab and sha'aban why because they are the precursor to this amazing moment and take us into Ramadan take us into this unique opportunity. For us, you know, it is a season of piety. It is a season of righteousness. Right? People have sale seasons, Black Friday or Christmas season or Memorial Day. You know, people have these sales. People look forward to it. President's Day sale. 
I'm going to hold off because that day, everything is inexpensive. Everything is easy to get, and I want to avail of that. So people who want to become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people who feel that they are distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they tried throughout the year, but they just couldn't get it. They just could not get to where they need to get in their journey towards becoming Ahlullah. This is the time. Even a single moment, even a single moment of Ramadan is enough for us to realize the haqiqat of wilayah. This is such a blessed time. And look at the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. You know, Ramadan, as you, as you know, it comes from the root word Ramadha, which talks a little bit about the year we are burning in our own desires of our nafs, which are called hawa. We are burning in our own outward and inward sins and disobediences that we have normalized in our life. And so this month is there to cool us down, to wash those sins away. And so what do we do in this month? As we know, the fourth pillar of the deen, so, which we call fasting. And the linguistic meaning of psalm is to just stop yourself from doing something. Right? But when we talk about shari meaning, psalm basically means for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning intentionality is there. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we do? We stop ourselves from eating, from drinking, from certain actions, eating, drinking, from being intimate to our spouses from dawn to dusk. Intentionality is there. So if the intention is I just want to lose some weight, seems like a great chance. That's not really the spirit and essence of song. Or I just don't have enough money to buy lunch. That is again, not the essence of song. It is for the sake of Allah. Why? Because we are trying to show Allah Ta'ala that Allah Ta'ala, you matter to us. That your love is it, that you are it. And for your sake, Allah, I am willing to sacrifice completely halal. Some will say it's even an act of ibadah. That we take the risk. The Quran tells us that kulu washrabu, eat and drink. So eating and actually acting upon the hukum of Allah, but Ya Allah, for your sake, even when my nafs desires it, even there's a need. I am thirsty, but Allah, for your sake, I'll give it up. And being intimate with your spouses, you know, out of it, but it mentions that when a husband looks at the wife and the wife looks at the husband and smile, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala smile upon their face. This is an act of ibadah, being intimate, but Ya Allah Kareem, you matter to me so much that I am willing to even let go of this. I'm even willing to stop myself from acting upon this. So this is a month in which we show Allah, we sacrifice our needs. We sacrifice and we stop ourselves from even halal actions with the hope that for the rest of the year, we can stay away from haram and mushtaba and doubtful things. And this is what we call taqwa. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, Azim al-Shan, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu. This is what we call taqsis, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not addressing all of humanity. He's addressing those special ones. Those people whose hearts Allah Ta'ala have opened up to Iman. Those people whose hearts submit themselves to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Those people who are a living testimony of وَالَّذِينَ amanu أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ That people of Iman, they are deep and intense in their love and muhabbat for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala addresses those people who make that claim. Hazrat ibn Abbas ta'ala who mentions that Allah ta'ala in the Quran addressed the mu'mineen, the muslimin 88 times like this. Now, listen to, we must listen to. But if it is Malik wal Mulk, Zul Jalali wal Ikram, the king of the kings, and he addresses you directly without any medium. Ya Yuhallazina Amun, I am speaking with you, people who love me, people who do Ruju ilallah, 
Inabat illallah, who inclined towards me, who aghbat towards me. Those people who say, La matlubi illallah, La marghubi illallah, La maqsudi illallah, La mahbubi illallah, La ilaha illallah. Those people, I'm addressing you. So Allah addresses us on a very intimate and a very personal level. Kutiba alaykum as siyam. That I have enjoined siyam on you. Psalm, as I said, to stop yourself. In Arabs, you know, in Arab countries, when they are training horses, they stop giving it feed and, you know, they stop providing it shade. And they're called sa'im as well, right? They stop, they put in a burden so they can break. It's called breaking the stallion. And so Allah says, Kutiba alaykum as that I have enjoined this upon you. This is something that you have to show. Because in order to get something, sometimes you have to lose something. If somebody were to tell you that yes, you will get to meet the new president of NYU, but you have to wait for an hour, two hours, like fine, I'll wait. What if somebody says you'll meet the governor of the state? So I'm willing to wait three hours. What if somebody says you'll meet the, right? So people say that they are willing to make sacrifices in order to meet people that matter. And when it comes to love to meet, but of course, it's all about sacrifice, right? They ask like, what are you willing to, to do for me? To bring the moon for me, right? It's people want to see sacrifice. Sacrifice is an indication of love, of muhabba. It is an expression and manifestation of muhabba. So kutiba alaykum say, sure, you say that you love me, sure, show me. Show me that I matter. Give up something that you need so you can give up something that you desire. Okay? Don't worry, this is not a punishment for you. This is something that all the previous lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to do. They showed this by action. Adam alayhi salam is fasting. Nuh alayhi salam fasts on Ashura. But right. Isa alayhi salam fasted for two months. Musa alayhi salam, 40 days on Kohe Tur, he's fasting. Dawud alayhi salam, he used to fast one day and not fast another. It's called Sawmi Dawudi, right? Fasting on um, one day after another. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was given the present of Ramadan. And there's a history behind it as well. Because the Sahaba Karam Rizwanullah Hajmain who were so different from the way that sometimes we behave. They, when they heard that the previous nations, they used to have such long lives, that they used to do so much ibadah for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. They had this hasra, this longing in their heart. That our life is not that long. There's a hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the average life of my ummah is between 60 and 70. You know, 63, our blessed Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away. And so 63 years, what can we do? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the longing of these amazing people, the Sahaba Kram, Rizwanullah Hajma'een, gave this gift, a gift that has so many gifts within it. That, okay, so you want this chance to come close to me? Here it is. You don't have hundreds of years of life, but if you spend this time with that intention, if you spend this time with that awareness, that in Allah you will be able to go even further than any previous ummas they were able to go. So that is why the month itself is blessed. It, there's mention in a hadith that the birds in the sky and the, the fish in the sea and even the, the crit ground, they make dua of maghfira for the person who's fasting. That's why it's called shahrul ghufran, a month of maghfira. Doesn't matter what kind of sins we have done. Doesn't matter what kind of rebellion we found ourselves in. This is the time to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everybody made use of this time. This is why in one of the narrations mentioned that this month is divided into three asharas. Ten days, ten days, and ten days. And it is said that the first ten days is an ashira of rahmah, extreme blessings. Now, if we think about this, those people 
who, alhamdulillah, worked really hard during the 11 months. But they just wanted that extra push. These first 10 days are for them. That you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have proper adab for each fast that you do, and inshallah, you will become wasil billah, you will become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what about people like us who have sinned? Sometimes we sin, sometimes we don't. It's like a sign of going up and down and up and down. The second ashra is called the ashra of maghfira. If you're able to spend the first 10 days with that awareness and vigilance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with proper adab on and proper adab of fasting, then fast the middle ones, in days and inshallah ta'ala people who have committed any sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them and the narrations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day hundreds and thousands of people are taken away from hellfire that this is a month that Allah ta'ala likes to forgive right? this is just an excuse to forgive Allah is looking for an excuse to forgive but then what about those who have really you know, who have who've, who've now who've turned themselves away from Allah, that they are suffering from hopelessness. Sometimes, shaitan makes us feel like that. You know what? You can change. You transform. There's nothing you can do. You try. Those people who spend the first 20 with proper intention, proper adab, with muhabbat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the last 10 days are called itkum min nar emancipation from fire. That even those people who had been ordained that they will be punished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so massive that in the, on those last 10 days, even those people are forgiven. So this is, this is again what I say, it's a seizing the moment. We will find ourselves in one of those three asharas. Alhamdulillah, if you're righteous, now you'll become wali of Allah. If you're going up and down, now's the time to establish some good habits, the power of habits, right? It's a good book. Right? To establish good habits. If you could not pray the hajjud before, you have to wake up for suhoor. The hajjud, the shirak, and chast is right there. If it was difficult for you to do nawafil, extra, you know, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my servant becomes close to me through the faraid. And he does the nawafil till he becomes beloved to me. Till he becomes beloved. So time for awabin and taraweeh. We're listening to the Quran, attaching ourselves to the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shahrul Ramadan, allazi unzila fihi al-Quran. This is a month of Quran itself. Allah ta'ala chose to send down this guidance in this blessed month. And this is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he used to do dawr of the Quran with Jibreel alayhi salam. So we should try to do a dawr of Quran on our own. Just get attaching and connecting ourselves, just like our master sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ All lovers did that. Why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُوا This is the key. People say eyes on the prize, right? We do something to attain something. Why? Hundreds of thousands of dollars coming to this university. Right? So we have a goal in mind. I need to get this degree. Right? Everything works towards that. You, you, you get the major, you take the classes, you go to events, all that is, this is the prize that I'll get. I'll get the degree at the end of the day. We're not just here just for the sake of it. Exactly like that. What is this boot camp? Why is it that we are made to go through, through this burden? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ This word taqwa is such an amazing word. Such depths in meaning, layers of meaning. One meaning is so you become fearful of Allah. But really, taqwa, my dear brothers and sisters, it's an awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just to you know, digress a little bit, there are two words used in the Quran. One is called taqwa, the other is called ihsan. Taqwa is that you don't want to disappoint somebody. The fear of punishment, that's to lose that connection. So taqwa has that is dominant. And ihsan is all awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ta'bud Allah ka anna ka tara, fa illam takun tara inna hu yuraq. Right? It's the hadith of ihsan. It also is the awareness of Allah, but an awareness 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they manifest themselves. So, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You develop, you become Allah conscious in your existence. This is what Allah Ta'ala wants us to do. This is really why we're here. That gnosis, that knowledge, that ma'arifah, the awareness and vigilance of Allah at all times. This is what differentiates a mu'min from a non-mu'min. Alam ya'lam bi anna Allah yara? Do they not know that Allah is watching them? Huwa ma'akum fa'ina ma'kuntum? He's with you wherever you are. Nahnu akrabu ilayhi min habli al-wareed. He's closer to you than your own carotid artery. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ He is near you. Allah Ta'ala wants us to understand this, to have that awareness and vigilance of that. And this is the month in which we put a foot over our greatest enemy. Well, one of the greatest enemies is shaitan. Shaitan, all the shayateen, they are chained in this month. Allah Ta'ala makes it easy. Do health. That it's become such a big distraction, we turn away from the dunya. We are busy in ibadah. Third is the makhluk. It's just always wanting to be around others, whether physically or on our smartphones. Right? And so in this month, we shut that away, especially for those people who do i'tikaf. Ya Allah, I'm going to leave where I live and I'm going to go and hold to your door. I love you so much holding on to your door, Ya Allah Kareem. So this is people who want to kind of get rid of these distractions. The fourth enemy, my dear brothers and sisters, is our own nafs. Nafs amara bisu, the nafs that inclines towards evil. This is just the natural state of nafs. It covets pleasure. It covets desires. Why do we run after these things? Why are we willing to sacrifice our akhirah for the sake of this little dunya, this little life? It is because of the nafs. And so when we burden our nafs throughout this month by stirring it, by keeping it thirsty, by staying up at night, by praying tarawi, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy. All the enemies are gone. And now the next step, is the closeness and qurb of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers, important that inshallah ta'ala we seize the opportunity. Right? It's like Allah is giving each and every one of us blank checks. Right? If somebody gave you, I don't know who the richest guy now is, maybe Jeff Bezos or the Twitter guy, right? <laughs> Elon Musk. Imagine he comes to you and he gives you blank checks. It's like write whatever you want. Right? Write whatever you want. And it's also deep, right? We negotiate that, you know, we want something done, a plumber, an electrician. We're like, how much will you charge you? Why? Because, you know, we have a limited budget. But a king never does that, right? A king will be like, okay, you do the work and then I'll give you so much that you'll be happy. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is exactly like that. Allah ta'ala says, sawmu li wa ana udzabihi, That the fast is for me. And now there are two translations depending on how you read it. One is that the reward is upon me, that I'm the king, I will give you, according to my son. The second translation is that I am the reward. Subhanallah, when you read this, that fasting is for me, and I am the reward of it. Allahu Akbar Kabi. I mean, it's for a lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just reading this, Ya Allah, you are the reward that I get you. Your muhabbat and your qurb, Ya Allah, there's nothing more that I need and want in my life. That you, I'll get you, subhanAllah. And why is this such an important ibadah? Because every ibadah has riya in it. If I'm praying, mashallah, you know, this is something, it's a human condition. If somebody's there, my sujood are going to be longer, right? I'll, I'll try to impress people. This is how we are. But fasting, there's no riya. Because nobody knows. You know, if I'm making wudu and I drink a couple of, you know, uh, you know, uh, some water, nobody will find out. The fact that a person, a servant in Abd of Allah Ta'ala does not do it means that this person cares about Allah. Ya Allah, for your sake. And because this is such a personal thing, without any riya, Allah Ta'ala says, I am the reward for it. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gives us so much. And you know, there are so many narrations about du'as being accepting at suhoor and iftar. 
you know, much bigger talk here. I'm sure, you know, uh, Imam Khalid is going to cover that during, you know, when he comes. But really preparing ourselves physically, but more mentally, psychologically. Our Kabirin, they used to read, it is said, like 63 Qur'ans every, every Ramadan. We can't do 63, at least we should do one. Right, so they used to have a schedule of how do I leave something that is a bad habit. Adopting something that, you know, this is a month of adoption of good habits. This is what they call glad hiding from Allah that this month is coming. But if a person does not make use of this time, it's not that, okay, well, fine, you just lost it, you're just not going to get into this class. There are ramifications. There is a hadith mentioned by Abu Huraira It is a sahih hadith in Ibn Haban. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa one time, pulpit and he said Amin, Amin, Amin three times and he was asked Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi why did you say Amin? He mentioned three things he said that Jibra'il Alayhi Salaam came in and he made three duas and I said Amin to it. First dua is that he said that those people may be destroyed that they find their parents in an old state, but they do not honor them, and they do not take care of them. And I said, I mean to that. Second, may those people be destroyed who hear my blessed name, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they do not send salawat on me. Because he has done so much sacrifice for us. We owe it to our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third, and we have to listen this with open heart. May those people be shunned away from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who experience this month of Ramadan but they do not get themselves forgiven. And Rasulullah sallallahu said, Ameen to that. And it is ajeeb and ulama have written about this because Prophet sallallahu would always, he cared so much about the ummah, why would he make the dua? You know, people be, you know, destroyed and shunned away from the mercy of Allah. And ulama have written that because there is so much that you do not must sign that and, you know, because tab is to return back that this person has been forgiven. So we'll have to look at ourselves. Have we changed? Has our thinking changed? The emotions of our hearts, the desires of our nafs, the things that have they changed or not? If they have, then alhamdulillah. Allah has forgiven them and forgiven us. If not, then we have to worry about this. So inshallah, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from this coming month. May Allah ta'ala keep us in each other's duas, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transform us all. Ameen ya rabbul alameen. Wa akhru davana and alhamdulillahi. Inshallah ta'ala, if brothers can move up, really appreciate it because there are sisters in the back as well. Try to make some room for them. Jazakumullah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاة هيا على الفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله على ذات عظيم صفات سمي سمات كبير الشان جليل قدير في ذكر متاع الأمر جليل برحان 
فخيم الاسم غزير علم وسيل حلم كثير الغفران جميل ثناء جزيل لطاء مجيب الدعاء يميم الاحسان سري الحساب شجاب يليم الاذاب عزيز السلطان ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له في الخلق والامر ونشهد ان سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله المبعوث الى الاسود والاحمر المنوط بشر صدر في الذكر وصلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه الذين هم قلاصه العرب العربه وخير الخلائق بعد الانبياء اما بعد فيا ايها الناس وحدوا الله فان التوحيد راس الطاعات واتقوا الله فان التقوى ملاك الحسنات وعليكم بالسنة فإن سنة تهدي للطاعة ومن أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد واهتدى وإياكم والبدعة فإن البدعة تهدي للمعصية ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد ظل وغوى وعليكم بالصدق فإن الصدق ينجي والكذب يهلك وعليكم بالإحسان فإن الله يحبنين ولا تقنط من رحمة الله فإنه أرحم الراحمين ولا تحب الدنيا فتكون من الخاسرين ألا وإن النفس لن تموت حتى تستكمل رزقها فاتقوا الله واجملوا في الطلب وتوكلوا عليه معين واستغفروا يمددكم بأنوال وبنين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أننا ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا رسول أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يديه الصاعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشدا ومن يأسهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسا ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين وأزواجه وذرياته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمة أبو بكر وشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصلكم حياء أثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاتمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة وحمزة وسد الله وسد رسولي اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباتنا لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم من بعد غرضا فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي يرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى ينحان الفحشاء والمنكر والبرج يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وجل وتم وأكبر We hope you enjoyed our podcast. If you're inspired by the work that we're doing at the IC and want to help keep it going, subscribe to our podcasts, follow us on social media, donate to help support us at icnyu.org, and most importantly, keep us in your continued du'as. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.